budgets can be voted on by whom and who has that authority to present it to the, which electorate. And the reason I say which electorate, <coughs> it could be the Middlesex electorate, it could be the merged district or something else. I'm trying not to make any assumptions here, but that you need to think about all these issues as a board. Mm -hmm. And so that at the last meeting uh, from talking with Chris Leopold and with um, Emily Simmons at the Agency of Education, and none of them would say they have a solid opinion on this right now, is that the motion that was uh, approved by the electorate at the district organization meeting had an event certain and not a date certain. And so it is their opinion that since it didn't have a date certain, that there would need to be a warning, a rewarning of the organizational meeting. And it's not clear by whom. I have not had the AOE come back to me. I've asked them the question because in the original articles for the original meeting, it was done by the secretary. I haven't heard anything more back on that. I've asked the question officially. I have not received anything back. Um, and then after that, there is a 30 to 40 day waiting period for the election of the merge board. And then from there, from when the merge board seats, there's a 30 to 40 day w warning period that needs to be there for the election of the Washington Central Unified School District budget. If you took all those days, and this was as of February 22nd when we had 129 days, and you assumed that by March 15th there would be a ruling of the board. That's a big assumption. That's why I got started there at the bottom. That's when I started counting. That the earliest that there could be an election for, and this is really like election, merge board sits, recommends budget, adopts warning next day, go. I mean, it's that tight. Mm -hmm. We're at June 18th for a budget vote. If there's an, a local election, you have 30, day, 30 to 40 days to warn an election and then have a budget vote. And the last bullet that's there, and this is the one I say that it's not fair to have it on the local side because it's not on the merge side. It's true. It would be true for the merge budget as well. There's always a 30-day period for petitioning to challenge any. Mm -hmm. So you should take that off and strike out the total from 60 to 70 days, and it should say 30 to 40 days. Um, I believe that you can make that decision on your own. You can make that decision with advice of counsel. Um, it's up to you as a board. I've said this to East Montpelier and to U32 already, and I'll be talking to Worcester tomorrow night about it. The reason I haven't talked to Callis in Berlin yet is because they have warned budgets to be voted on in town meeting. They will then have to deal with the question of if the budget is adopted, is it is it an authorized budget to go to AOE? And because what this all does, what this all goes, the long play on all this is access to cash that the school district has to meet payroll. Mm -hmm. and, and that's after July 1. After July 1. Well, actually, every teacher has a contract from September 1 through August 31st. And that's based on the pat on the fiscal year that that cut. It, so let me just say it this way: If you were hired this past summer, your official starting date was September first, two thousand eighteen, mm -hmm. and we have all the cash to pay everyone all the way through August thirty first. Mm -hmm. What for people that are year round employees, such as myself, that cash isn't there. It ends June thirtieth, so it's on a year round contract. So what we're looking at is what are the cash reserves within the entities and when do we start having access to cash that is the next fiscal year there's a statute that says if you do not have an adopted budget that you are allowed to borrow up to 87 percent of the previous year's budget so it's wow. so, borrow so we would be paying say that number again that. you you have up to 87 you're allowed to borrow up to 87 percent of the previous year's budget and until there is an adopted budget. Once it's adopted, does it apply retroactively? Yeah, you, well, it does reply. It, that's your budget, so whatever it is. I don't know if I can really answer that question mm -hmm. about retroactively because you'll be, we would be running on an 87% budget. Um, the board could decide so it doesn't a mean borrowing. It's not, it's not the expenditure budget, it's the revenue. Okay, okay? so it doesn't mean you're only. <coughs> 
funding eighty percent, eighty-seven percent of the programming. Well, that's a that, just, that's a decision the board the board would have to make. Right. Do you want to do you want to take the risk of maybe spending at ninety-five percent, but knowing you only have eighty-seven percent of your cash, and this is why you have to look at cash reserves. Okay. So we're getting we're getting into a conversation about risk tolerance mm-hmm. that the board would want to take and starting to look at that and say so because the question that comes into this and this is the last part on the bottom of this is that your master agreement says that by April 15th you must present contracts to teachers or they're not locked into their positions mm-hmm. and if there are any rifts you must must let teachers know before April 15th. Now, in our budget here at Rumney, we don't have any rifts. There are some in some other schools. Um, but you would be signing on to contracts that, you know, we what I don't have for you tonight, and I purposely didn't bring it because it would be a discussion that I'd want to have at a next meeting after you heard advice or at that meeting to say, um, so how much is 13% of the budget? How much are our, our human resources, our salary and benefits obligations? You know, is that 50% of the budget? In my sitting here right now, I think that's about 65 to 70% of the budget. Mm-hmm. You know, you have some fixed costs with these buildings. You've got a bond debt you've got to pay. You've got to pay the energy to keep it going. Um, you know, so there's some fixed costs. And I would bring you what those percentages are. We're looking at all that. Lori's been doing some quick calculations on like, what do we have to have to have the building run? And then what are the things, either by statute we don't have to have, well, really by statute we don't have to have, so that you as a board could look at those, where you want to make choices. And so I think that you should be advised about um, what pieces of that statute. And the question that U32 asked Monday night, which I think is a really good one, which is how do you get to a budget? How do we get to presenting a budget to whomever? That's what we want to know is how do we do it, not what can't we do. Uh, and that's the question that's been forwarded on U32. Well, I want to tell you this. I'm going to say this next part about what U32 and East Montpelier did. It's not trying to push you in one way or another. Uh, they talked about it. I presented the names of these are the folks that have given you advice through the Act 46 process. Um, I really like Dorothy's question. I wish she was still here. That's why I asked for this, because I'd like to know what the total legal fees are. Mm-hmm. Um, but you've had advice from Scott Cameron, from his firm. You've had advice from Paul Giuliani. You've had advice from Pietro Lynn, and you've had advice from Chris Leopold. The Articles of Agreement Committee selected Chris Leopold as they were presented with those names. Um, you also are signed on to the lawsuit with uh, David Kelly, Charlie Merriam, and Ennis McGinnon, who are representing you there. Um, so those, any of those folks could be represent you, could counsel you on this, or someone else. I mean, there are two other school attorneys that I know in the state that do work for schools. It's not just the Act 46. They've got to be aware of master agreements. They've got to be aware of the fiduciary uh, statutes and know those as well, because there, it's going to be an intersection of all these different pieces. Okay. So what what would we be getting counseling on specifically? Um, just because it seems to me that if we have um, uh, contractual obligations to let teachers know by April 15th, yeah. uh, and we don't have a decision from uh, the judge uh, on injunction, um, and we don't know whether there's going to be a, um, you know, a the United, well, or United or budget or yeah. not, uh, that we, we have to take a budgeting step um, to uh, present a budget to the electorate, and, and if, if it becomes a nullity because something else has happened and we're a merged unit, uh, that that would just, that wouldn't be an effective budget. But are they going to advise us on uh, not presenting a budget, or when to present a budget, or... I think those are all questions you should ask the attorney, and I don't feel to be the person to... But I mean, I, I don't think we're going to move forward without presenting a budget to... Uh, the electorate by July 1 in some capacity. I mean, if it's not going to be a unified district doing it, I think we will take steps to do that from a local perspective because we'd still be a uh, going entity, right? Yeah, I, I don't know, Chris. I yeah. just don't. I, I have gotten to the place where I don't feel I can advise you anymore as your superintendent mm-hmm. on those pieces and that I should 
recommend that you talk to people who know the law better than I do. So I have three questions. Um, first one is, this meeting that we're having now wasn't warned for 30 days. It was an emergency meeting because we needed to discuss this. So this meeting today? Yeah, right, I'm right. This wasn't. No, yeah, this is but not, it doesn't, I don't think it needs to be warned for 30 days. It only needs to be warned for 24 hours, and it's a special meeting. A special meeting. So yeah. I guess I'm confused, uh, maybe because I don't know the specifics of what constitutes a special meeting or an emergency meeting or those things, of why um, so can I, if the can, court ruled we couldn't call it a special meeting. So, not call it a special meeting, but have it be a special meeting. Okay, so this is the difference. You're talking, we're talking about a school board meeting. That's what we're in right now. Mm -hmm. A school district meeting is something different. Okay. So a school district meeting where you, any of the electorate can come and vote, that requires a 30 to 40 day warning. Because about people law. need to vote. Right. So and that's so you're talking about there. a voting component to the meeting that yeah. requires the 30 well, to 40 day Well, even any, any okay. school district meeting, yeah. it would be a special school district meeting because you'll have an annual school district meeting that happens on a date certain every year, usually town meeting day mm -hmm. for our mm -hmm. towns. Um, but when you have a, any district meeting, you must warn it. <laughs> okay. 30 so like our April 9th meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and so right now that... Yeah, no, that. I don't need to go... No, that's okay. These are good clarities. Good sure. clarities. The, so, because I see the first and the third bullet as being election related. The second one is not. So I guess I'm curious what... That is election related. They're all re there would all be articles presented to the electorate. So... I'm sorry, I was thinking it was the seating of the board. It is electing the board members. Yeah, okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, I don't totally remember what I meant for my second question about a draft budget. Um, so you have a budget that you've, you, you did not I don't think you approved it. I don't I it's think we did approve it. We got the we, we did. Um, we didn't warn we it. We voted on it. We didn't warn it for town okay. meeting. Okay. Um, right. So one concern I have would be, uh, so there's a piece of me that thinks in the budget that the majority of the board members voted on, there were no rifts, there were no cuts. <coughs> so in other words, in terms of contracts on April 15th, at first it seems like that wouldn't be a problem, but... Well, it's it the would warning because it. the town hasn't voted on right. it. Right. So and so, yeah. if the town voted down our budget, and we had already issued teacher contracts, um, that would be a problem. Well, I think it, for me, I, I, if we were to pass a budget, the town was to vote on a budget. What authority would that budget have in regards to the the operation that we're sort of required to be operating under given the state mandate of, of a merger. So I, I, I don't know what budget would take precedent, whether our, I mean, what would our budget mean anything, even if our town voted on it? Would the state pay the money, that, pay us the money for that budget? Because um, would it consider it to be a, a valid budget? I think it would depend on whether a stay was issued or not. Mm -hmm. um, because if a stay is not issued, then a merger will happen by July 1st, and then it would be a unified budget. If a stay is issued, then the merger is halted, and we continue on as an entity, because we would not then be dissolved um, on June 30th of 2019, is the way I would see that those things into play. So if we presented a budget to the town, and the town approved it, um, and um, there, there was no stay and it merged, then that budget would be a nullity because we would not have the authority to, this entity, this legal you know, municipality would not have the authority to borrow the money. It would be superseded by a unified budget. So I think there's no harm in, you know, other than people coming out and voting and, and the cost of the, of the vote to actually warning um, uh, and having a vote on a budget. On April 9th or on another time? April 9th or how before, so can I just give you before June 30th um, or actually probably before May 30th so if there's you know need Wouldn't for it a petition before April 15th and we have to hope that it's passed so can I just give you a little yeah. bit more 
Um, so um, U32 talked about that on Monday, and they asked me to prepare them a warning that had them for April 9th to look at their meeting on. They're going to meet next Monday. Mm -hmm. They have a meeting. And East Montpelier has a meeting. They're having a joint meeting to meet with Chris Leopold. They've decided that. Um, they will then, on March 6th, there's a U32 meeting, which I will bring them a warning, and they can decide whether to accept it and have that posted. To meet April 9th, it's a uh, 30 days prior is March 11th. March tenth, tenth, eleventh. So they're gonna, you know, we're, I'm trying to say to folks, and the reason why in the last meeting I was saying the first week of March could get busy because I could see us all saying, "Hey, let's have everyone." And this is one of the things Scott Thompson said, totally agree with. If we're gonna have one election, especially one that's going in all five towns, we should try to get all the elections. And that's not me saying which way I feel about this. It's just saying I agree with that sentiment. Um, so we have to draw up a warning, and and you. This group already said April 9th was a possibility. Mm -hmm. So you've said that, and that's why I referenced that. Um, we would need to get you a warning, which we can do. It's a couple hours worth of work because, as Chris, you know from being on the executive committee, the executive committee told us back in August to have two tracks open all the time. Mm -hmm. We're ready to go. We can go either way. It's, it's just really producing the warning on paper. That would need this group to come together at another meeting to approve that warning so then it could get posted. Right. Okay. The other piece I would let you um, know is that our practice has been with teacher contracts uh, because we've had such a good fortune in Washington Central that budgets are approved on town meeting. We usually, as soon as they're approved, start getting into budget creation. And so that's why I said I would have a question for you as a board. I don't need an answer tonight, but I would somewhere before April 15th about where would you want to authorize contracts to be signed and handed out. Because with or without a budget, I think I heard Allison or I heard someone ask just now, I just wanted to clear the procedure that we usually do, which is once the budget's adopted, we go into budget creation mode. Um, we only have one time that we've gone through a point where we didn't have a budget. Um, while I was here, and that was with Berlin, and. Um, we had it. We had the budget adoption afterwards. I don't recall if we did letters of agreement or letters of intent, I should say, versus contracts. I'd have to go back and research that. Uh, is there a difference in terms of the binding nature? Yes, the letter of intent is not as binding as a contract. Okay, so it's based on a future action, which is passing the budget? It could be. Well, it's based on your intent at that moment is to work there, but if a, something better comes along, then okay. your intent should so it's, it's usually, and it's usually it's done there. when there isn't a master agreement approved on April 15th. Yeah. So that, that's usually, that's been our history of using it, is using it, well, like, we don't have the master agreement finished, so without knowing the master agreement, it's hard to set up what our contracts are going to be with teachers. Okay. And so... Allison, you haven't had a chance, haven't you? I just, I feel foolish for saying this, but I just want to make sure that I understand. I, I'm processing a lot to digest. So on the merge side, we don't have an entity because articles were not adopted. So we Not because articles, we didn't conclude the district organizational meeting. Okay. But articles also were not adopted, correct? Well, we have draft articles that are given to us by the state board. Chris all right. So we don't have an entity for the merged district. So we we have to create the district first before we can pass a budget within the district. We have to have an elected board first before, because the elected board is the only one that has the authority to present a budget to the voters. Can we elect a board for a district that hasn't been formed? So you don't have authority from the voters yet because the district organizational meeting has been adjourned to have a method to, to elect that board. Right. So we have no entity, which means we have no board, which means we can't vote on a budget, and our timeline is becoming very tight for being able to deal with that on, per your little description yep. here. Yep. Um, and on, on the Rumney side, we're okay if our town approves our budget on April 9th, but if they don't, then I don't really understand what happens out of that case. And I, I mean, I guess it's just we can't, we can't agree to the teacher contracts, and then we don't really know what's happening with the state giving us money. But are there other issues that I'm missing? Uh, well, we can 
issue teachers' contracts. You can it's, just, it's a risk issue as to whether we'll have the money to pay to for pay them, for right? Them. Right. So it's it's kind of a risk uh, risk tolerance risk tolerance analysis of you know because we even without a budget we are authorized by statute to borrow up to eighty seven percent of the current budget amount uh, to fund next year, and so that there would be money to pay the contracts, but we'd be dealing with an eighty if if a budget was never passed we'd be dealing with an eighty seven percent of the current budget, uh, but if a budget is then passed. You know, goes, so what happens if we the break the contract? What? What What is the ramification of us breaking the contract by not being able to pay an employee? Yeah. yeah. You, you have to pay them regardless. You don't have to offer them a job, but you have to pay them. But if we went over our 87% and we did not have the money to pay them. So you'd be in deficit spending, and you would have to make up that money on the next year's prior budget. So schools that have not have gone into deficit spending, um, where uh, I have I have the fortune of never having to do that, but talking to superintendents who have, the next year say they spent they were in deficit a hundred, let's just use an easy number hundred thousand dollars, the next year's budget a hundred thousand dollars had to go to pay off the deficit. Okay, can we get? Is it possible to get close to a figure on what interest costs we would be paying on our 87% and what other fees would be associated with that if we don't pass a budget so that we can display to voters the financial ramification of not passing our budget? So, that, do you see what I'm saying? It's not, not that passing easy. Our budget. That's yeah. but, not but if we if we don't, if there's no budget passed April 9th, for if it's Romney or whatever day it is in the so, merged organization. So this is what I don't know, Allison, right now. And a court uh, ruling on the injunction would really help this. I don't know if, a, and this is why I think you need legal counsel, <laughs> frankly, because I don't have the answer for this. If you, pa if the Romney, uh, if the Middlesex Electric comes out and adopts a Romney budget, right. I don't know if that's an allowable budget or not. Right. And I don't know. I just don't know. And I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to push this one way or another. I'm just trying to tell you what I don't know. And and I think and you as a board need to make these decisions about what you want to do. And that's why I bring you this issue. So under what circumstances would it not be an allowable budget, Chris? I I don't know. Yeah. I just don't know. Well, there's kind of a, there's. I mean, if we. If we have a it right to stay, it would absolutely be, be an, an allowable okay, budget. Right, it would right. be an allowable and, budget, and, and, and it is the same budget that we were going to present to the like we didn't increase anything. It it would it be, was, if it's a, you mean if it's if a budget it's that we had already adopted and just presented that. I mean, what, if the stay is denied yeah. and we have an adopted budget, I think I, I mean lost that would be effective. That would just it would be effective <laughs> I mean, because we would be the ongoing author my, authority to present a budget. The town could vote on it, and there'd be no superseding so unified Chris, I've district. Asked, I've asked this of Will Sending at, at the Secretary of State's office. He doesn't know the answer. So I wonder if the articles of agreement could there be an article that year one each town just votes on their own budget? I think or that's that specifically not allowed. Yeah, 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 that I think that does go against. Yeah. Against have, what was yeah. the unified yeah. nature of the, of the okay? Uh, so my third entity. I think um, we have some oh, yeah. people yeah. out here. Uh, so David Lawrence, I just wanted to say I see all where you were going with that, Allison, and I like that idea. I think it's relevant because I'm not entirely sure I understand it. But to paraphrase what I just heard from Bill was essentially is if the budget is not passed, we can fund to 87 percent. If the merger is stayed and doesn't go through, that's the budget we would then have to be working on. No, no, because you can always pass a budget that would then supersede that. You can always, I mean, if, if you'd the, have if, to have another special, if you don't pass it on a meeting day, you're going to have to then call another meeting to pass a budget. Whatever day, it the won't be town percent. meeting this year because we didn't warn it, right? But whatever day it's voted on, if it's voted down, right. we would come back, revise it, and then warn it again, present it again right. to the, the usual way that these right. things happen. Right. I think because of the confusion around this, that should be explained to people. Yeah. Kyle? I, I guess it, it seems pretty straightforward to me that uh, if we don't warn a local budget, there are various scenarios, like if the, the court stays the state board order, in which we end up in the 
67% on July 1. There's no scenario in which we get to run on the budget you want on July 1 if you don't warn it before then. If we warn it, we vote on it, I'm quite confident our community is going to vote in favor of it, but at least there's a chance it gets passed, and I think a very good chance, and then on July 1, we're fine. We have the full budget. There's a chance the agency of ed says, oh no, that's not valid because you were supposed to merge, but remember in this scenario, the court has said no agency, you're wrong, that merger is not allowed, and so good luck to the state agency if it tries to do that to us and you know they work for us we're Vermonters and the idea they would do that to 40 different districts I think it's we're not alone in this I don't think that's very likely but regardless even if it is a chance at least this gives us a path if we vote on our budget to actually having the budget we want on July 1 in the non-merger scenario yeah, yeah. I don't so. have a budget question per se, but a logistical question that may have already covered. But in terms of the teachers' contracts within the next year, if we do merge, I'm assuming, but just want to verbally make sure those contracts are honored. Yes. Yeah. So that, that's a, that's a good point, Matt. I didn't say that, but any it's in the articles of agreement that we've been handed by the state that any contract that's signed on to before June thirtieth. The new, if we do merge, we, it has to be honored. Right. Okay. So that's, yep. that, that's part of the perplexing part of all this is, um, and I, I truly believe it's a board decision to make. This gets into risk tolerance, and this is when the board should be really in on these decisions, is to what level do you want to make commitments, and to what level, when do you want to do the budget? I, I... I don't. I mean, I just don't have a lot of answers, and so I think you have to make decisions as a board. I sorry, I don't. So, so. for me, I think um, having a budget worn for some time in April be before, like after our April 9th meeting, so we can give information. So mm -hmm. maybe April 10th, but before April 15th, I think makes sense. But I think the board needs to vote again because we voted with the numbers being that we were going to be unified and it does change in terms of the threshold um Wait, we, say that again i don't think we did actually yeah. my my because because if we voted when it was unified we would not be over the cap and we voted right. knowing yeah. we were going to be over the cap because we were standing alone i, I would as your superintendent i'd want to bring so can i just say this i want to bring back the budget to you so you can see it numbers have changed as i've been How? telling you equalized pupils positively? Is, positively for romney yes Okay, but so equalized pupils have they finally got locked like last week, which is almost two and a half months after when they usually get locked. So, so we're no longer in the zone. No, you're in the penalty, but just barely. Like, and I don't remember. Okay. Chris, don't ask me a like because I just don't try to remember this stuff. Sorry, so, I, I just stop trying to remember things. I will bring you your budget and to have you look at that and then adopt a warning. I think is something you should do. But I think you should do that with full knowledge on the table instead of just trying to remember. So okay. it seems like there's probably you'll have I mean you, you'll have two new board members right. so if there's an informational meeting I think it would be helpful if those board members had some information on the budget and had had a vote um, in terms of the risk question my opinion is I don't maybe I'm being super naive or optimistic I just don't see the issue with borrowing 87 percent um it gets us through the summer i just can't imagine that a year from now we still won't have a budget I'm, I'm, regardless of if um i mean if the judge never rules between now and july 1st i guess that would be my one thing of not knowing then what would happen but um I just don't see, I mean, 87% of this year's is not 87% of the one that we were looking to adopt, but it's a difference of 3%. Um, uh, I guess thir I just, 13, I don't see it. 13%. 13%. You said 3%. Right. The increase, you mean? Well, the difference yeah. between the difference. You're talking about the increase. I'm in the talking budget. about the increase from this year's budget. Oh, okay. So it's 87% it's of this year's budget. Right. 
we had a three percent increase for next year, so it's not. I apologize. So we have just so, but even so. So could we borrow? Do we get access? I'm sorry, let me make words here. We can borrow up to eighty percent, eighty-seven percent. But is there some sort of time limit on that? Can we only borrow a month at a time? No, no. Per- you, you, borrow, you borrow it until. Because we pay okay. a, it's a, not a like big chunk. Okay. It's like not September. like they'd only lend us 87% on a month. month right. okay. It's going to be it the 13% would come at the something. end. Right. Okay. I mean, one of the things that we have done as a calculation was, okay, if we had to use all of our all of our allocated fund balances and all our different funds across the SU and the 87%, we know we'd run out of money about April 1st to April 10th of next year. Okay. And how? Okay, so that's helpful because I just so that. But I feel like we also need to know how much it's going to cost us. I mean, I think well, these are short-term co- loans, it, but it's well, it, well, it's the big cost is actually what you're going to lose in revenue. This district on arbitrage mm-hmm. across <laughs> the supervisory union. I don't have the number in my head for Romney. I'm sorry because Laura and I were talking about this for two days ago. Is about what's three, that word you just said? Arbitrage. We're yeah, allowed to take. Is. What happens is, the voters give you authority to borrow money in lieu of taxes. So we borrow money. In the state of Vermont, you're allowed to reinvest that money. We actually borrow at a lower rate than we invest at. So we make money off of the, the, mon- the money investment. We make quite a bit of money off, mm-hmm. and you get it in revenue and it cancels out your taxes. In the whole SU right now, it's about $325,000 that we make in revenue between the difference of what we're charged for the interest and what we invest at. So, you know, that would be, that's, a, you know, we, that's across all entities. Right. That's know. a budget of the... Like, if you looked at the whole thing at around $30 million, that's yep. what it is. So how can we find out some sort of idea, like, on a month, if you don't approve the budget, if we, if we wait two, if we're two months late, how much is that going to cost us? If we're six months late, how much is that going to cost so us? So I can't tell you the bottom line. What I can tell you is how much that would change you in interest. But I can't tell you what it would because I don't know what the final budget's going to be. You see, I see your question differently. I see it this way, Allison. What would it cost us in loss of revenue of interest right. or extra costs in interest because we have to pay for interest to borrow the money, but we can't reinvest it? Right. What's that cost? That I can answer for you. Okay. I can't tell you what it's going to cost you overall. You see my, how the question's different? I think so. But I guess I feel like we need to somehow be able to present, well, I would like to know for myself and then to our voters, like, what does this mean? This is, a, you know, an idea of what this is going to cost if we don't. But there is no if we don't. We don't have control. Like, we're not deciding. I'm saying that I think it may motivate people. Like, that would, to that may change. Budget? Well, to even potentially approve whether or not we create a W... <laughs> Mm-hmm. I keep calling it W. Cust in my mind. I, should, I need to find some other name for that <laughs> district. Uh, the new district, like, like I, people need to know, like, okay, we cannot do this, but what is this actually going to cost us? What is, what is your risk if you are making this decision to not create this district and not create, not then elect a board for that district and not create a budget for that district? And also for Middlesex on April 9th, if that's the date we use, what does this mean? Because we, we have gone over our penalty, although apparently less than we did previously, but that may significantly affect what some people think about voting for the budget. I don't think we've never, we haven't been in the penalty in many years. I don't think ever. Oh, Actually, go ahead. I don't think ever. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I would just echo that when you're talking about your capacity for risk. I think you should be very aware that going into the penalties over the budget is a red line for, for many mm-hmm. yeah. voters. You know, and in continuing to increase the budget during times of uncertainty is a is a bit of a red line. So when you're dealing with your capacity for risk, you should probably factor that in. Can I ask a few questions? Mm-hmm. You? Yeah, okay. please go. Um, so to the 87% and the interest that we would get charged, would that be charged on our exist- in our existing 2020 budget? Yes. So we would then be paying, our budget would increase. No, because, you, so let's think of this as two ways. You, I just want to be really clear about when we use the word budget. Within a budget, the voters approve an expenditure budget. Mm-hmm. Okay? So what you, you already have an expense in your expenditure budget for borrowing money. Okay? 
So that probably wouldn't change much. I mean, we could argue about tenths of percent, usually about what we can borrow money at. You have a revenue budget that the voters don't approve. That revenue budget, the expenditure budget was built on understanding what you think the best understanding of the revenues would be. What you would lose is the interest income on the reinvesting of that money that was taken out in lieu of taxes. So let's say it was $50,000 for Rumney. I'm really clear here, this is just a shot in the dark. You would lose that fifty thousand dollars of revenue, or part thereof. Or part thereof, right? Chris is right yeah. on it. it I, until once you get an approved budget, until it was, you're going to start right. then taking that money and investing it. But right. you can't when you have access to the eighty-seven. It doesn't mean we can go get arbitrage on. It. So that could be five thousand, ten thousand. Who knows what it could be? That's but, right. But two months ago, when we were painstakingly trying to figure out how to reduce $30,000 right. in the budget to get us below the threshold, um, which we never did, is, I mean, that's less money than, than we have to buffer against the threshold. Um, so, hey, sorry, would, would we pay on the, was it a double dip? Were you asking if it was a double dipping, if we pay interest, do we then also pay the penalty on it? Was that your question or no? No, I just okay. didn't know if it, if it increased it would increase the, our pen, our, where we are in the penalty zone. So let's say, I understand it's changed, but before we were around 30000 and would our um, payments on those uh, on the interest, would that increase it to 35000 I have the same question, but I don't know what the answer was based on what we just well, I think Yeah, I think Bill's saying... You guys just lost me in the question, so <laughs> uh, you're going to have to re-ask it to me. Um, I, think, I think Bill answered it to me. And he, it, it, he's talking about... It, don't look at it. Uh, we have a we have a, uh, an expense budget, and so there's a line item about uh, borrowing and the interest there, and that should that will be captured in there. Okay. Where the loss is is the money coming okay. in to offset the expenses, and that's really where. Um, okay. Yeah, we we budget when we build your budget, we budget for a greater revenue than an expenditure on interest. Okay. Okay. Um, my other two other questions, um, and I can't remember one of them, but the other one was uh, let's let's assume that uh, there is not a stay, and we are forced to merge. What does that mean for um, for a budget and contracts? For even if we are just simply making a recommendation of a budget to the new board. Um, if we're talking 90 to 120 days um, from March 15th, that's way beyond April 15th. So, um, I guess we're dealing with the same, I guess it's the same question we've been talking about, but with less. You have less. You have less room for time because you have to accomplish more steps to get to presenting a budget um, with the merge, with with the merger now. It would be uh, a longer period of time to potentially be borrowing. On that. Oh, it, it depends. I mean, given this timeline, you would have a budget by July first if everything fell into place. Um, but we, you, you have those multiple steps to get there, though, yeah. uh, which which we don't have here. Right here. You know, we were able to warn a budget and present it to the town. Um, but again, if, if the stay was denied and the merger was going forward, um, our, any town budget here would be a nullity because we would not have the authority after July 1, right? 2019 I, I so. is my, my I assumption. So. I think so. Um, I... The, that would be then the merge board. I don't know. Um, you know, it, I, you know I, I don't see a downside of um, actually warning a a budget vote for April 9th. Um, you know, it's just basically, uh, I think, um, taking protective steps in the event that a stay is issued. Uh, and if it is, then the budget vote would not be effective, I don't think, because you'd have a different entity. Uh, so I don't see a downside to actually warning a budget uh, and, you know, maybe revisiting it and then warning it and then having a vote. 
So, Bill, do you think the number changed from what we voted on, the, the actual budget amount? Should they look at it again and re-vote, or should that be the number that is warned? Okay, the, my the opinion? difference being um, the next Romney meeting is scheduled for March 14th. Yeah, no, we'd have to have a meeting before March 14th. So We need to have a meeting. I mean, I mean that's, that's one of the things I'm going to say. Was, I mean, it sounds like if the gap toward the penalty zone has diminished significantly, sounds like significantly down. It's down. I just don't remember, Chris. Um, you know, might be, be able to be totally honest. To what? Well, just finesse it a little bit more to get it under the zone. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, we never, we never, that when we give you penalty zones it, well, during budget process, it's Lori's and mine and data from the Agency of Education's best estimate. No, it's yeah, we, we, it never, we knew that. It never and, gets and, and, solid, and that's why it changes. And um, you said. Could change up until July. Right. Is what I understood, yeah, right? Yeah, that's exactly yeah. what I said. So. And that's where I was going again, just to make sure yeah. I was clear. Yeah. Um, you know, we have we have the numbers we have now, and we'll we'll get them to you. And, and you might want to do that. But I, you know, my recommendation to you in going that route is saying we need to have a board meeting uh, by Friday the 8th of March. Okay. Is there, so I know um, both Youth 32 and East Montpelier are going to engage in a conversation with an attorney. What's what specifically are they trying to get answers to? They're asking how they can continue operation of their school and protect teacher contracts and mm -hmm. present a budget to an electorate. Mm -hmm. They specifically didn't say which one. They said we'd like to know how we can present a budget. That was the question. Floor was there, so I think yeah. I got that right, right, Floor. Yeah, yeah. That how was the conversation. Do compliance with statute. Yeah. And so did you did you the you know, East Montpelier Board have a sense that they could not present a budget right now? Well, there's a lot of risk involved with it, so we could present. And I'm speaking for myself. Yeah, yeah. We we can present a, a budget and take our chances in April. But what we want to know is the answers. How do we? And the only reason to go look for a lawyer is that in the absence of a transitional board and having been told by the state that 49 is the law right now and not accepting our criminal burden, how do we stay in compliance? You know, how do, th we don't have the, you know, it's, everything is really muddy. And I'm actually going to read, it's even Scott, I had a big conversation with Scott today, and he said, this, given the possibility of a decision by the judge not to issue a preliminary injunction, how in the meantime may we prepare for an eventual merger, both in compliance with the statute and in absence of a transitional board? That's Scott Okay. So uh, that's all. It's, it's just very, it's, it's, it's super simple. Yeah, I explained to him because he didn't feel the same way about hiring a lawyer and we yeah. got in a conversation and, and, you know, and then we arrived both at the same place and I can show you. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> so, it, you know, that's, that's all. You know, that, that's the only way. It's not to spend more money. It is just because if we don't have the backup of, of, of a lawyer, it's just we as four members we are interpreting the law for, and neither of us are, you know, you're a lawyer, but none of us at East Montpelier are lawyers. So all we want to do it is do it, is, is, is do it right. And they might say, you know what, you can present your, I, and I don't even know. I don't even and know. And my, my point in bringing it to you as, as a superintendent, as a recommendation, is not to say that you should do it or you shouldn't do it. It's to say, I want you to make a determination as a board and you can it's fine with me if you say as a board we don't want to consult with someone that's fine if you say you do that's fine i just i know i have to bring you issues and you need to make decisions and you're going to make the best ones you can so i just say just one more thing the other thing that we struggled with was that even if we presented a budget if you said 200 we, we would be doing it for less than half i don't know, get uh because right now i think well i don't know i really know the proportion you're uh, right. We, You're right. There's more U32 for East Montpelier. There's than, more. Whatever, there's more U32 right now for East Montpelier. So we would have been passing a budget for less than half our population, let's say, and then still have to come around again. Mm -hmm. So I think us, uh, whatever we are right now, is five, six districts. At the end, we all have common outcome, common contracts, common. You know, so the reason to hire a lawyer to just get one opinion was to, you know, how do we do this? Right to honor those, you know, they just had a, this huge negotiation for how long? For a year or whatever it was. You know, we can do what's right too. 
job. When are you meeting with your attorney? Monday. Tuesday at 4 o'clock. 4.30. Couldn't, or 4.30. Couldn't we designate a board member to go? I, you know, I think if we, we're going to do it, we should, all the board members should hear it, I think, um, as, as a, just as a matter of course. And I'm not but trying to tell you what to do. No, I understand that. Tom? Um, a couple of things. So, one, this school board has hired attorneys. Um, and just, you know, Charlie's Mer Charlie Merriman is no longer on the Act 46 case. But um, David Kelly and Ms. Inez McGillan are attorneys mm -hmm. on the appeal of the state board's order. And all of this, how do you prepare for the different outcomes, I think falls within the realm of that. And so they're a free resource that this board has. Um, it sounds like what Scott was talking about was a question about how do you move forward towards merger and merger happening by July 1 if there's not a stay. That's a separate question from the one you asked about. Do we actually need an opinion? Uh, is anyone actually questioning whether we can warn our local budget? And I have not heard that being questioned. That seems like kind of a silly thing to ask a lawyer about because it seems we've got two districts that are already doing it. We've got districts in other parts of the state that are doing it. And so I don't think that's actually in doubt. And the other thing with anytime you're wondering, can you or can't you, an important question is who's going to complain? And so, I mean, you know, this is the doctrine of standing. Like, are you actually injured? You can't go to court or do anything if you're not injured. And I don't see an injury to us warning our local board. We've talked about a potential injury if we end up on the 87% path because we haven't had a board, uh, a local budget voted on by July 1. So maybe those questions should be separate. One is, you go forward on the local budget, that seems pretty straightforward. And then Scott's question about how do you prepare in the absence of the organizational meeting is a separate one. And my opinion is that Inez and David are the cheapest and best resources on that. Others would have different opinions, I'm sure. And so we're not the only union that is going through litigation right now, right? There's no, how there's many not. Like there's like 30 or 40 towns. Yeah. So what are they doing? I think the difference, though, is that we we basically stopped any type of process from, Con from happening. Right. Right. And, and so, are and we so, the only ones that have done that? No. no. That's happened in all of the I, I think there's, yeah, there's, one. can I just, Augment to that, and I, you're right there, Kyle. Most of them, except for Enosburg, from what I know, and I could be wrong, have set a date to come back. So they adjourn to a date. So they don't have an extra 30, 40 days on the timeline of the merger. What I, what I understand, and I could be wrong, is that Enosburg, Richford, are in the same place we are. They adjourn to something else besides a date, which requires a 30, an extra 30 or 40 days of work. So instead of having 90 to 120 days, they have 60 to 90 days. And I'll just also add yeah. I mean, my answer to Scott's question of how do we prepare for this merger in the absence of the organizational meeting going forward is that's for the state to figure out. They're the ones doing this to us against our will. And it's a bunch of districts, and they're going to have to figure it out. And there's all sorts of political ramifications if they don't. And so I don't think we have to worry about that piece of it. You know, I actually do think we have to worry about that. Um, be, and, and, you know, I'm not in favor of this merger. Um, but there are legal processes and entities that are in place now. Um, we're trying to, you know, the anti-merger folks are trying to stop it. Um, but unless, if Judge Mellon never doesn't issue a decision by July 1, you know, something, that, that a legal action will happen. Uh, and, you know, he was, I think he was pretty clear about knowing that that's the deadline because he kept saying, when do I have to rule by? Uh, and, you know, folks would say, well, at least by June 30th, I think, is what they said. But sooner because of all these other um, pieces that have to happen before then. Um, so, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think that saying the state has to figure it out is, is uh, um, an answer because something will happen. 
um, and there's and and what would be is we, we won't have a budget um, potentially, uh, but you do have the eighty seven percent ability to borrow, but that entity has to be up and going in order to borrow because again has to have an entity to to do the borrowing um, but i I agree with you completely we should go forward that nothing stops us from warning and you know having a vote on the local budget, which is you know the run the budget now uh, and probably should proceed along that step and I don't think we need a lawyer to tell us that we can do that uh, and you know I, I guess you know, it's, it's, we should certainly, I, I think we should participate in this conference just to hear what folks have to say. Um, but, you know, I think the, uh, we've heard a lot about divided opinions, even amongst the attorneys. No one has come down with it. Oh, this is the way it clearly reads. It's, you, know, you have different options. So, um, I, I, oh, have we had enough discussion? So I, I'm with everybody on voting. I'm calling the question on voting on the local school budget. I don't think we've really, I don't think we have any decision or plan as to what to do regarding our merged budget. And I don't know if there's any way or mechanism for contacting the other schools who are in the same position and sending a letter to the state, the agency of education, demanding a plan to go forward in, in the situations that we're in. I feel like they should be the ones to tell us because I think it's a terrible plan that we ask some lawyer and then we get into a situation where we're actually standing there holding, you know, we are accountable, we have the checkbook, and we have not been told what to do. That just feels like I can't even comprehend how that can be. But well, well, the difficulty with that is that you're going to the state and they're going to be getting their lawyer to say what you should be doing, and they haven't always been right. So it's just a lawyer in some situation is going to be giving advice, and it hasn't always been clear and correct. And then and, the and judge so, could vote and against I, that. I think I'm not wrong the, in what I'm saying. The there. state has told us what what to do. Well, they've told us to pat to merge. Yeah, and so and so it's you know it's our communities that have disrupted that uh, and our decision to do that. But so I mean we've we've, we've essentially put ourselves in this position, um, and I don't think we can expect the state then to change to, to to change their position. In order to accommodate, you know, us. Um, my my biggest concern. I, I'm fine with warning a vote. Uh, my biggest concern is really trying to better understand this whole 87 uh, percent and the ramifications. I mean, there's a lot of livelihoods uh, that sort of are uh, are in the balance of this. And um, I, I'm just I'm, what what type of confidence level are we sending to? Um, our teachers and and families with kids here about what we're going to be able to do um, for next school year. Okay, so I propose that we um, agree to have a meeting on Thursday, um, March was seventh, um, to reorganize because we'll have new yeah, board members then, yeah. uh, and then reconsider the budget, and then warn a meeting for April 9th to consider a budget. Um, I'd also suggest that any board members who want to go on Monday um, to listen to any council um, do so uh, with the understanding that uh, it would be a collectively shared cost. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not, it's not yeah. free advice, it's cost. Yeah, I know that. Um, well, that's why U32 and uh, East Montpelier put in their motion that they would share the cost for folks that have said. They want to be there for the advice. Do we know how much the advice costs? Two hundred and fifty bucks an hour. Right? <laughs> That's <laughs> That's what it is. I don't know if it's two fifty, but it's probably 250, about two hundred fifty bucks an hour. It's two fifty for yeah. our it be executive budget. session, or I don't see if the board gets to choose, yeah. and um, there are seven reasons. As you, I think you know this, Kyle, but just for everyone else, there's seven reasons to go into executive session. Um, it receiving. Blanket legal advice is not one of them. It has to be for a specific purpose, usually around real estate or personnel, or I negotiating crime. In the audience. Anybody can be, yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> so I mean, I don't mind the two, no. 250 an hour no, and sharing it. Like, yeah, say that just, it's three yeah, that's, hours, that's, that's 250. That's just, we should just yeah. pay our share. That's, that's not classy I, I, at all. <laughs> so I don't mind paying what? our share Freeloading? for the next meeting. <laughs> no, I agree. <laughs> um, 
I would agree to pay our share for Monday's meeting to send somebody. Maybe I'll just make this a motion that um, I make a motion that we designate a board member to go on Monday, that we split the cost currently in three ways with U32 and East Montpelier. And whoever else may show up. Exactly. Do we need to? So, th so that's going to be, so I guess that's my motion. Um, so I, I would, you accept a friendly amendment? Yes. Um, because the cost doesn't change no matter how many board members go. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Meaning that's 250 an hour. If you have 10, 250 yeah. an hour. Yeah, so whoever wants to go um, can go, is my friendly amendment. But we should I make just, sure. We just should but we sure have at least, at least one. one. Yes. Right. So I, I would just tell you as your superintendent, just, in, just to protect you, I would warn it for a Romney meeting, just so you have it warned. So that's fine. more than three of you show up, you've got it shown up. And I don't see a problem with that. I just want to yeah, tell you. okay. It needs a second. Second. Oh, okay, any, so then in the discussion, I just want to say I wouldn't feel comfortable voting beyond the Monday night meeting. If the board needed further counsel, I would want the new board members to decide that on the night. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, you, but for the Monday meeting. Clear and specific to that meeting okay. alone. Okay. Um, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, and I'll move now that we um, schedule a meeting for uh, March 7th, uh, yes. Thursday at 6 o'clock. Do you want to do 5.30? It used to be 5.30. It wouldn't schedule, made it, so it had to oh, be yeah, 6. Oh, yeah, 5.30. And, and any objection to 5.30? Sorry, wait, wait. What, what day? Uh, March 7th, Thursday. Do you need 6? This is for our... Sounds like 6 is still needed. Six, it was an attempt yeah, to 6 get is for me, too. Is it what? 6 p.m. is... I mean, I won't be able to be here at 5.30. <laughs> okay. Mary Lynn won't either, so just oh. do six. Six o'clock? Six oh. okay. I will just tell you that um, just because we might be running four or five board meetings, so between Laurie and myself, we're covering these because they're budget related. So okay. We'll just, you'll, you'll know who's going to be there. I just That's want fair. to forewarn everybody that we're okay. trying to cover things fast. When, at our last budget discussion meeting back in January, yep. I think it was, you mentioned that there was an audit being done on um, services, support services, uh, or something of, those, of that nature. Yeah. The director of student Service. services, working with our special educators. Yes, they did talk. Okay, it wasn't like a, it wasn't a review. What I'm curious about is, were, have things, is, has would that, that process impacted? Yeah, or, yeah, could that it have did any to the point where the teachers gave the, they said we'd like the administrators to make any recommendations on changes to staffing. We would, don't feel comfortable doing it ourselves and giving input. I was actually pretty shocked. I was hoping they would do that. Okay. So, uh, do we vote yet? We voted. We don't. Okay. So my well, on my motion to um, schedule a meeting for Thursday. Oh, do we need to vote on a meeting? Uh, you know what? You don't need to. We don't, you, okay. You, you have, so we're just going to, we'll do it. Two of us, <coughs> by your okay. policy, have the authority to call for a meeting. Okay. And then we'll uh, <laughs> deal with, uh, we'll have budget numbers by when? Bill? Oh, we'll have men. I do, you know, we, we have the budget, we have the budget numbers now. It's just a question Could you, of publishing. You, so there's going to be, um, there's scheduled meetings on Saturday and Monday. Yeah. Um, we, can we have them by? By then? So I have to give you your old numbers because Lori is at, actually off tomorrow on Friday. Okay. So I don't have a way, I mean, I do, but I don't trust myself without Lori double checking what I would do for her, um, right. recalculating everything. So I have right. your original stuff that was in January, and I can have you for those meetings. Mm -hmm. I can have that. For the meeting on the 9th, I will have your the changes that have happened, you know, for penalty. Okay, for a, August 9th. Uh, uh, for March April. 9th. Well, it's, I don't think it's March is 7th. It the 9th? March 7th. 7th. Sorry, oh, yeah, March 7th. 7th. Thank there, you. Yeah, Sorry. Is there any way that we could get that at least a day? From Monday. Oh, no, I, I yeah. can do that. I just can't do it. Literally, Lori's on. She started today and she said, I'm not back <laughs> until Monday. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So I just can't do anything before Monday. <laughs> okay. That I, I can do it myself, but I want someone else to check it. So that. Um, <laughs> any more discussion on 2.1? <laughs> Okay, so we we'll move on to 2.2, .2, which is the uh, principal search committee process. So when is the meeting on Monday where count, where lawyers are being? Oh, yeah. Uh, it's 4.30 at U32. 
the auditorium? 128. No, 128. 128. 128. Okay. Can one 120. of you just guarantee to be there? I will. Chris, you'll be yeah, there I'll for be sure. There. Yeah. I'll be there. This is room 128? Yeah, it's yep. usually U32 board meeting. So. Okay. Um, so, principal search committee, and um, so, Brian, thank you for your email. I think it was very helpful. And uh, so, um, I'd like to um, open the discussion that we um, have gotten applications. Yep. Right? Uh, and um, have there been, um, has Carla gotten? Um, She's gotten a lot of people asking to be on the committee. Okay. So, um, what I think we want to reconfirm is the composition of the committee. Yeah. Can I just, let me just say this. Sure. Uh, Carla's been letting people know that we're figuring it out. Okay. And we'll get back to them as soon as we can. Same with the, the candidates have been told that um, in to hold certain dates in March right now and that because of vacation, and this has happened in other principal hirings because of this long February break, that you know this is when you'll be notified by and, um, and I can get that timeline out to everybody of the actual dates. But we, you know, we had a, as I said in the letter that I put out that Chris, you and I had gone over was that March 11th would be forums, mm -hmm. um, and then the next week would be interviews. There would be a, the committee would come together, hopefully on the 15th, which is that Friday, to look at resumes. We would call people. That's what, we've done this before with principal candidates to say, hey, we're going to call you this day. It's only three or four days to the interview, but we will let you know four weeks in advance when you might have an interview. So please save that date. Okay. And we did that with all candidates, okay. so they have that time. So the committee would be composed of um, four teaching staff, including one para, uh, one um, special ed representative, two community members, and two board members. Um, and uh, in light of the, and I, I would propose that the teaching staff self-select who they want to be on the committee. I know this may be concerned about um, voices being drowned out. Um, I, I think, it, in my view, respecting the staff to self-select uh, rather than impose a selection process is the way to go for me. Um, in terms of community members, I think the board could select the community members to serve um, on the and just as we'll self-select um, interested board members to serve on the committee as well. Any ideas about that? I have a comment. Sure. <clears throat> um, Brian was very kind and wrote an email with his thoughts. I um, was very surprised to get the email from you and Bill mm -hmm. about that the sitting that the board had contracted with someone. Um, it seems to me that it was a process violation because I believe that we met in January and all five board members were in agreement that we did not want to hire a consultant to do this work. That um, we all five agreed that the director of curriculum did a, um, uh, an above board job at the process last year. We had no complaints and we would feel very comfortable um, delegating the process if something had changed it seems like it should have come back to the board for a decision particularly before communicating out that the board had contracted with someone um, and further knowing that there's been a lot of discussion just in terms of our board makeup having this one issue that we all pretty passionately felt and gave ample time for discussion and we all came back saying no we did not want to hire someone it was really hard for me to then see that we had indeed hired someone and we hadn't had the chance to vote on it or even really discuss it I know it was discussed a little bit at the February meeting I haven't seen those minutes but um, I do not believe that there was any type of emotion um, so that is definitely one concern I have and the makeup did shift a little from our discussion but it sounds like now you're saying two community members so right. that's 
Yeah, yeah, and I have to so, apologize for the So let me, let me confess um, and apologize because there was a shift in terms of the curriculum director um, being able to serve. Um, and it should have come back to the board. So it was my error. And I apologize for that. Um, so the, and that, that was made clear during the February, February meeting. Um, but, Is there an option, Bill, for <coughs> any administrator in the supervisor union to lead this for us? Maybe another there principal, is. assistant principal. There were, you had um, people who were trained in um, facilitation. I don't know if anybody who we, like, do that work that they can take on. No, I, it can be tasked. It has, in other issues, it's tasked to other principals at times to do things like this. Um, I I was trying to get it as neutral as possible, frankly, and that's why I suggested to Chris to have Lori Singer, who was a former principal in Washington Central well before I was here, well regarded. Um, I was given her name by a couple other people that I just thought that that was a good way to go, and to uh, let you know, I Chris, I've been saying to Chris the whole time, my biggest goal is to bring Rummy and the Middlesex community together, and yeah. I want to do that. It's still my first goal. And by the time we got the email um, I, from Brian, I did call Bill, and contract had not been signed. Okay. Um, but you know the error had been made, uh, so just we're not breaching a contract. Um, just to at least yeah, my, not, no, right, and we're not. No, Laurie was, was very gracious about it when I talked. To and um, so, in terms of the process moving forward, <laughs> um, yeah, are I you still interested? Are you still yeah. interested? I could, so I completely understand Bill wanting it um, neutral. I think that, um, so my, my first preference would be central office or somebody within the supervisory union. Mm -hmm. If nobody within that were willing to do it, um, yes, I would still volunteer my time so that we would not pay. But I would be really clear about what I would be able to offer and see if the board was interested. Okay, so, um, so first, do, you, do you want to do that now so that we... Well, so first, do you yeah. think that you could find somebody within the SU that would be willing to do the process? It's that last part that you say, I can always direct someone to do something. I try not to ever do that, because that, especially in a hiring process, because they need to be in a good place to do that. Right. I have not gone out beyond Kelly and Jen to ask, them if, ask someone else if they would be willing to do it. Um, I would have to do that, and I can do that, um, but I don't know the answers to those questions right now. So what if Bill did that by the ninth meeting, the, the meet, by the meeting on March Seven. 9th? March 7th. March 7th. 7th. I, 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 want... I screwed it up for you, 7th. Um, and, and then at least you know if you have somebody. Okay. And then I could come to the new board as a non-board member and say, in terms of process, you know what my skills are what I what time I would be able to commit um, and the way that I would do the process does okay. that make sense yep um, there's a timeline yeah and, okay? I, and I was gonna say to you you and I haven't had a chance to talk about this but if you were to do it I, and I said this to Chris I said you know all the resources that we have for all the hiring processes all those are there and Carlin uh, being our HR coordinator she's you know, she's ready to go to support whoever's doing it where she was for Laura. She had already started setting that stuff up. Perfect. So, okay. always there. Huh. Uh, I'm just wondering, is Jen out of the country or something? Because she did great last time and was totally neutral and, you know, she she works for us. We're already paying for her. And why wouldn't she do it again this time? I'm trying to I need to protect the confidence of some of my employees, and Jen just doesn't feel comfortable doing it again for Rummy. And so the, you know, with that development, uh, it seemed that um, it would have been better to have someone who's um, more comfortable uh, shepherding the process. <coughs> Okay. I have some yeah. thoughts on the, um, not on the, the makeup itself, but sort of how the process, yeah, how the people on the committee are formed. 
Um, you mean select? It's, so yes, is that okay. I would I would actually suggest <coughs> that I, I think it's um, fine to let the teacher self select. I would suggest that the consultant select uh, the community members to be a part of it, um, and I'd also suggest that we. Um, I don't know if we can. Well, I guess we can structure however we want, but. Uh, Again, as an opportunity to bring <coughs> voices to the table, is that um, people that serve in the last um, process not being uh, eligible to serve on this process? Now that could come to an issue with the board, depending on how, what board members want to serve mm -hmm. on it. Um, but that may be a problem with the staff. Um, okay. uh, some staff have talked to me, just come up, talk to me when I've been in the school. And, um, <laughs> Well, some they're, they're going to self-select. Right, yeah, I understand yeah. that, but there there are some staff that um, that were in it last time that would like to be in it this time, and there are some that would like to be in said uh, that don't think they should be this time and were last time, but that um, if we set a blanket no to anyone that was last time, you may have a few people that do, mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know. I have not. I've literally not looked at the list. I've asked Carlin. I don't want to see. Good. I'm glad there's a lot of people that have asked. I just don't know who's on that. Mm -hmm. um, I would tell you that in the past of making up staff committees, it pretty much has been a self-selection, but it's been a self-selection around segments to make sure you represent the school. So you wouldn't have everyone from, for instance, from the K, pre-K through first, second grade, representing everyone in the school. Right. It's, it's So you have the cross-section mm -hmm. of the school. You have a, pers a teacher from the Unified Arts. You have a teacher who's from the intermediate elementary, you have one from the primary elementary, you know, you just, and you say, okay, so who would yeah, like to do I, that? I think a blanket no um, previous experience um, can do it. This time would not necessarily be a good idea. Um, I will tell even you that I am not going to. Well, There's even, only two. I don't know who was on board. it last um, time. I will tell you that I, 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 <laughs> that, <laughs> and I'm not going to put in for this search committee. Um, so as the board member, as a board member, yeah. Um, so you know that will you know, open it up. I think because it was me and Woden. I think we're on the last process. Well, Woden was Kate, Kate Carol. Carol. But, oh, she was going. Right. Who was? Who's, she oh, Carolyn. Carolyn. That's right, Carolyn. So it will be uh, two uh, new board nice well. members on the committee. Two new board members on the chair. I just wonder. I well, we're not we're not selecting tonight, but no, I know I wasn't going to say that. It had nothing to do with board members. Um, in terms of the community members, do you? Does anyone, so Bill, you don't know who's in for the community <coughs> members. Do any of you know who's in there for the community members as of right now? I know folks who have expressed interest. I don't know who's on the list, though. Yeah, I mean, because, I... I mean, could it be a rant? I just, I hear what you're saying about not having people that did it before, and then are their bias playing into choosing the community members? Can you have it randomly? I agree. I think it should be random. You know, I think everybody just... should have a timeline and a, and a way to apply for it. So far, there's really not been communication that's told people, if you want to be on the committee, do this. Mm -hmm. So I'd like a time that we make it very clear what they do, give them a deadline, and then randomly select from the people who have expressed interest. It just seems like the fairest, potentially yeah. the way that then it doesn't fall on anyone that this is a bias pick. And the teachers could have, you know, they have their way of doing it, mm -hmm. but that could be one option for them if they can't accommodate too many people. Actually, that, yeah, that sounds fine to me. Pick out of, essentially pick out of hat. Right. Yeah. Whoever's it's more like name's on the list and yes. pick out of a hat. <laughs> what? <laughs> what is I said it's more electronic <laughs> now, but yes. Yeah. Well, needn't be, I mean. <laughs> um, okay, any other, do we have to talk any more about the... You, um, so can I just ask a process? What? So. Can I ask you a process about that? Sure. Just so we get everything figured out. Sure. <laughs> Does the board want to do that? Do you want Carla to do that as your HR coordinator to pick the two people? How do you want that done? Do you want me to bring you all the names and do that? You know, do it no, I would, I would say that... Carla do it. Yeah. Okay. I think that's fine. We have some other names of people that have written the Romney School Board that want their names so on the list. So I think, I think what... what uh, Caroline says there needs to be another announcement. I, I agree, and so that's like, how do we do that? 
Is that I just, happened? I just write another. We, just, we, just had, and we, we do it on front porch. We put another letter out in front porch form, yeah. clarifying okay. that letter no, and saying, "Just want to clarify." And then again, as it said in that letter, you need to let Carla know by March. Okay. And so 8th. you will. The central office is going yeah, to do that. We'll get on that. Okay. And you'll do. You'll email everybody on the school directory yeah. and front porch form. Yep. Perfect. Yep. Yep. Okay. The IC directory and. Perfect. And these two names. These people wish to be on the list. They sent an um, email to the Rummy School Board asking okay, to be included. Yeah. Can you, can you just them? email me those. Okay. Yeah. okay. Email me those. Do you want me to email them to the person who's taking the or you? Both is great. What's the... Carla, what's her name? Car Carla. I'm going to get her last name spelling correct, so just give me a little. Okay. All right, so we're going to get encourage people from the community to apply, mm -hmm. and then that's I would say by next uh, Friday, March 8th. And we'll 3 be, p.m. We'll be clear. You don't have to reapply if you've already put in. Yeah, it's right. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I'm going to say, if you've already sent your email, uh, and if you've already emailed Carla, uh, you're going to have it. Okay. Um, so we're done with that? Next up is Act 46 lawsuit. Brian Reasons. Yeah, I, um, my my point actually, or my reason for bringing this up may be moot uh, based on something I I heard earlier um, because uh, I, I wanted to raise the concerns around uh, Charlie Merriman and his comments uh, towards um, Matthew DeGroote and propose uh, that we put forth a resolution asking for him to uh, be removed from the uh, legal rep legal team that is representing <coughs> us in other schools. Um, but it sounds like perhaps he has done he, that. He, that. That has happened. Can you just, he stepped aside? Um, I got an a, 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 um, a email from Inez. Um, what's Inez? Miguel. 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 Miguel saying that Charles Merriman, thanking him for his work, but he's no longer working on the uh, appeal. That came out, Mon I want to say, last week. Yeah. I think a notice was filed with the court on Monday. On Monday. Okay, yeah, so I think that that's... That's already occurred. So then the article was inaccurate? Um, actually, I think the, the article in the newspaper mentioned that, I thought. Yeah. I don't think so. Oh, no? I didn't see that. Unless they edited it. Yeah, really? OK. Yeah, no, he, uh, that, it maybe didn't make it into the article. Um, but it, seemed, but it, it has occurred. It to me that it was even it, it sent to you and what? all of that. The email that you forwarded from Vermont Digger. Yeah. It's. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't oh, understand that, right. where okay. it had stemmed from. Oh, I, I, I don't know myself, actually. Okay. Um, okay. We, any further business? Any more public comment? Okay. We stand adjourned at uh, 729.